Uh, hello everyone and happy new year. Thanks for attending the general plan and housing element annual progress report webinar. We will refer to annual progress report as APR and governor's office of planning and research as OPR for the rest of this webinar. Today is the second and the last APR webinar for 2022 APR reports. The panel is being recorded and will be posted on, uh, on OPR's YouTube channel. Also, all the slides will be ADA access, accessible. Please put questions in the Q&A. We plan to answer most questions in re written format and we'll pick a few to be answered live to get to the most of the questions. Um, I am Leila Hakimizadeh, Planning and Land Use Manager at OPR, and I will be moderating today's, uh, today's webinar. I am now going to pass it to my colleagues at OPR and Housing Community Development to introduce themselves. Uh, Beth and Clarissa, please start. Hello, everyone. My name is Beth Hotchkiss, and I've been working at OPR on our planning team for the past five years and I'll be helping out with the Q&A today. Thank you, and I'll pass it off to Clarissa. Hello, my name is Clarissa Maloney. I'm an executive fellow placed with OPR, and I will also be moderating the chat. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Tom Brinkheis with the Department of Housing and Community Development, a senior specialist in the Data and Innovation Unit, um, and I'll be in the Q&A uh, answering questions. Hi, I'm John Nuch. I'll be presenting the webinar on the housing element APR, and I'll pass it off to my co-presenter, Manuel. Hi, everyone. I'm Manuel. I'm a representative here in the data unit at the Department of Housing and Community Development, and I'll also be presenting today along with John. Okay, thank you, um, my colleagues at SCD and OPR for introducing themselves. So our today webinar has two sections. First, we will go through the general plan annual progress report for OPR, and then SCD will go through the housing element, element annual progress report, and at the end, we will have questions at Q&A. And so what is OPR? OPR is the state planning agency and serves as the discretion of the governor. We are not a regulatory agency, and our core functions are advising on long-range planning and research. State law requires that all California counties and cities adopt general plans, which include seven mandatory elements of land use, circulation, housing, conservation, open space, noise, and safety. A general plan is the blueprint for meeting the community's long-term vision for the future. In addition, the environmental justice element is for those jurisdictions that have identified disadvantaged communities and air quality is for jurisdictions within the San Joaquin Air Quality Control District. All jurisdictions are required to provide OPR and the Department of Housing, referred here as SCD, with separate general plan and housing element APRs by April 1st of each year. A general plan APR submitted to OPR should outline the status of the general plan and progress in its implementation for a given year, can be fiscal or calendar. The general plan APR must be presented to the local legislature for review and acceptance before submittance to OPR. OPR updates and post its GP APR guidance memo every year in our website. General plan APR requirements have evolved over years. It started from one report and eventually became a two report system. And starting from 2018, the requirements apply to both general law and charter cities. Um, so uh, no, uh, no standardized form uh, format is required for the general plan, a, uh, for the OPR general plan APR. And uh, does not need to include all elements, but should include a summary of activities for all elements that were implemented, not just the housing element. Uh, 
Jurisdiction should report on planning activities when undergoing a comprehensive general plan update. Although no standard format or template is required, there are certain information that should be easily found within APR, uh, APR submitted to OPRs. This includes, but not limited to um, reporting period, data presentation to the legislative body, last update of each element, and the next plan update for each element. Key, question, key questions to ask when developing general plan APRs. You can ask which part of the general plan were implemented over the past year. What was changed or was introduced in the past year that has impacted land use policy decisions? How does the general plan comply with the OPR's general plan guidelines? For example, environmental justice, Native American consultation and transportation laws. How can the information be presented in a manner that is useful for the public? Information to prioritize uh, in the GPAPR can include legislative priorities, a specific reference to planning activities, including but not limited to a specific plans, neighborhood plan, creations, general plan amendments, approval of major development applications, and uh, environmental assessments. If the information is available, a jurisdiction may include interagency coordination, implementation of mitigation measures of general plan EIR or equity planning considerations. A local government can include strategies for infill and compact development and preserving of agricultural land and environmental resources as a part of their open space and conservation elements. Content may include a jurisdiction's long-term planning efforts, such as economic development and accounting for long-term growth patterns. Content may be improvement to the technical assistant, data management, and, in, and administration that impact a jurisdiction's general plan implementation. After determining the content of the APR and having it reviewed by the legislative body, please submit one copy to OPR and one to SCD by April 1st of each year. There are two ways to submit the general plan APR to OPR. OPR highly recommends jurisdictions submit via the general plan APR submission form to reduce time and effort spent on the GP APR preparation by the plan by the planning staff at OPR. This year, for the administrative purposes, we have added a few questions to the general plan APR submission form. Is the submission on behalf of a jurisdiction that is a charter city? Is it a resubmittal? What is the reporting period for the resubmittals? When was the last major update for each required element? And when is the next major update for each required element? So these were the changes that were added um, for this uh, since last year. Please provide the year each element had a major update. By major update, OPR is looking for a comprehensive update that involve community outreach and required multiple levels of review. This is the screenshot of how a local government can submit its APR. The option is to either upload up to 16 megabyte or provide a hyperlink. The hyperlink should not be a Google Doc or Dropbox because we cannot open them at OPR. This is uh, also the link to the submission that you can also find in the general plan annual progress report submission form in the OPR's website. The second option is to submit through email. 
In this option, please add a cover letter that have all the information mentioned in this slide or the step-by-step -step guide in the OPR website. In the email option, hyperlink is also acceptable. OPR staff re reserve the right to ask for a resubmittal that um, does not include a cover letter. So we'll ask you to add a cover letter to your submit if you do not have a cover letter with the email submission. As I mentioned earlier, general plan APR should be submitted to both HCD and OPR. To submit your general plan APR to SCD, you may email it to APR at scd.ca.gov. A few reminders. Charter cities are required to submit their general plan APR since 2019. There are no penalties for submitting general plan APR after April 1st deadline. If you are waiting to have your APR be reviewed by local legislature, you can submit it without a review and resubmit it after it's reviewed by your um, appropriate body. OPR is tasked with notifying a city or county if a general plan has not been revised within eight years and will notify attorney general if a general plan has not been revised within 10 years. A few um, helpful links um, that shows um, how to access APR uh, website at OPR and at HCD. So that concludes my presentation. And now I am going to hand it to my colleague at SCD. I also wanted to remind everyone that the presentation for today was very similar to the presentation we had at, on October 6th. Um, so if you need immediate access to this recording and the slide deck, please um, uh, look at our website. You can also send your request through Q&A. We can provide a link. Otherwise, please wait about two weeks until our uh, admin staff can upload this recording and the slide deck from today into our website. Now I'm going to stop sharing and hand it to my colleagues at HCD. Well, hold on for a second, bear with me as I figure this out. All right, thank you for your interest in this online training for the Housing Element Annual Progress Report, or APR. I'm John Nooch in Housing Policy Division. I'm co-presenting with my colleague, Manuel Hurtado, also in Housing Policy Division. This is an introduction to the APR and a walk through the various tables. And afterwards, Tom Brinkhouse will be available for Q&A. Hopefully this presentation will help you to successfully submit the APR for your jurisdiction. During this webinar, you will gain a stronger sense of the background and context behind this process, changes to the 2022 version of the APR form, the benefits of completing the APR, the overview of the various tables, helpful features of the form, and how to submit APRs. Uh, to give some context, um, all jurisdictions in California, that is cities or counties, are required to prepare an annual progress report on the progress they've made to implement their adopted housing elements. That requirement is located in section 65400 of the government code. Section 65400 stipulates that the report must be submitted to both HCD 
and OPR. Jurisdictions are also required to complete a separate APR for their general plans and submit that to HCD and OPR annually. However, this webinar will only focus on the HC APR, the Housing Element APR. For the 2022 APR form, the format of the form has not changed from the 2021 APR form, but there are several new requirements which we'll go over. Like last year, you can upload the completed form directly to our database or email it to us at apr at hcd.ca.gov. If you need your jurisdiction's username or, and password combination, it should be the same as last year. And if you need it again, just email us and we will provide it. For the housing element APR submission to OPR, please email the completed Excel workbook to OPR at opr.apr at opr.ca.gov. And just as a reminder, the 2022 APR is due April 1st, 2023. Before we go any further, um, let me go over some of the benefits of submitting APRs. APRs are woven into numerous state oversight and funding programs. Several funding programs require up-to-date submission of APRs, including the Caltrans Sustainable Communities Grant and Permanent Local Housing Allocation, or PLHA, funding program. APRs are how jurisdictions report progress in implementing the housing element and meeting the Regional Housing Need Allocation, or RENA. The data helps HCD understand successes and challenges from cities and counties statewide, and this information can help inform future housing policy. Finally, data from APRs is used to make HCD's SB35 determination, also known as a streamlined ministerial approval process. This is an overview of the form to orient you to the topics for each table. We have tables A through H, including I and J, which are each represented by a sheet within an Excel workbook. A detailed explanation of each table's requirements can be found in the instructions. The instructions are your definitive source for guidance. We'll start with the Start Here tab. Here, you would enter the jurisdiction name and all contact information, including the mailing address. There is some conditional formatting in the form. As you can see, the required cells are highlighted in yellow. Some cells only become yellow once part of the row or the table is filled out. That is, once certain tables or rows start being completed, there are accompanying cells in that row that must be completed. The yellow also goes away when you've provided the requisite information. So any yellow in your APR should be a flag for you. All tables have required fields, but they get triggered if you start to fill out the table. So if you have no activity to report in a table because it does not apply to your jurisdiction or your jurisdiction doesn't have activity to report from the reporting year that is relevant to that table, leave it blank. No need to add any notes like nothing to report or NA because this will cause yellow highlighting to erroneously show up in your APR. The APR form has an importer button. This copies over information you entered on a previous year's form. This is useful if you have housing developments that have moved through the planning and building process beyond what was reported in the prior year's APR submission. So you just need to add the additional activity that occurred for a project during the current reporting year. So for example, you reported a project as being entitled during the previous reporting year, and that's all. But this current reporting year, it received the building permit. So that portion needs to be reported. The importer will copy over all project information from last year's form, meaning you just have to complete the additional building activity that occurred. Please note that the importer will copy most tables. If you need to, you can delete any information copied by the importer by selecting a cell in the row and, and typing control D. Okay, so table A is for any development applications completed during the reporting year. This includes applications for planning approval and applications for development permits. Applications for building permits are no longer required to be reported in table A. Cells in yellow are required. Cells in green are required if applicable. So in this photo, uh, you would enter the units into the appropriate affordability level and leave the rest blank. On table A2, you will report projects that completed entitlements, received a building permit, 
or obtained a certificate of occupancy during the reporting year. If there was no entitlement, you still report on this table. The same properties may be included in both Table A and A2. RENA credit is given based on the building permit section of the table. You can include projects from prior years, but this is not required. Only enter the unit numbers in the applicable portion of the form. If you enter a unit number, you will be required to enter a date. You will enter the number of new units, and if there were units demolished on a property as part of the project, enter the number of units demolished or destroyed in a demolished slash destroyed column. So for example, if a duplex is demolished to build a fourplex, you'd report all four of those new units and report the two units in the destroyed slash demolished column. If you select below market rate, non-deed restricted, you will need to provide an explanation for how this was determined. For example, by looking at comparable properties. We also have an affordability calculator on our website to help out with this that has been updated for the current year. For something to count as a unit, it must have separate living quarters for each household. If communal cooking slash eating spaces are the only option in the given development, those units are group quarters. This means that home key projects count as housing and can be reported on the APR. Several new columns have been added to Table A2 that must be completed only for projects that were granted a density bonus. These columns request additional information on the number and types of incentives granted to the project. So for Table B, Table B is the Regional Housing Needs Allocation and Extremely no, Low Income Need Progress. Permitted units issued by affordability provides a summary of prior permitting activity reported to HCD in the current planning cycle including permitting activity for the calendar year being reported. It now includes a column that show units permitted since the start of the RENA projection period. Table B auto populates. You do not need to fill out any information. Table B will populate for the current year from Table A2 and will pull from past years based on prior APRs. Therefore, you need to fill out your jurisdiction and the year on the Start Here tab to populate Table B. If you see any errors, contact HCD via email. Changing data in this table will not change data in HCD's system. You will likely need to update information on a past APR if you want to reconcile your numbers. Table C only applies if you rezone sites due to a program in the housing element or as required by no net loss law during the reporting year. Do not report sites that were rezoned outside of the reporting year. If the table doesn't apply to you, please leave a blank. No need to enter NA. Table D reports the status of implementing all housing element programs. This table is required for jurisdictions and must include a separate entry for every program in the housing element. We understand that the formatting of this table sometimes causes difficulties. There are character limits for each of the cells. Please try to have your entries be concise and to the point within this character limitation. If you run into any issues, please feel free to reach out to our team and we can suggest a few things for you to try. Importing your entries from last year's form and then just updating the implementation status may also make filling out Table D easier. Table E is for commercial properties with a density bonus approved. Please do not enter in residential density bonus development. Table E is intended, intended for commercial properties granted a density bonus as a result of partnering with a residential developer. Table F is for reporting units that have been rehabilitated, preserved, and acquired for alternate adequate sites. Alternate adequate sites is a provision of housing element law that allows jurisdictions to get credit for preservation activities and reduce the number of sites identified in the housing element. Table F includes two sides. Um, the left side is for you to share information only and does not tie to credit towards Reno. This section of the table is unlocked and we recommend that jurisdictions fill it out for your own records so you can keep track of any rehabilitated and preserved units. The right side of the table applies the jurisdiction used the alternate adequate sites option in the housing element review and has units to credit towards Reno. Contact HCD if you think this applies to you. 
Additional documentation will be required and HCD will assist you in completing the form. Table two is a new sheet for 2022. The legislature has created a new path for getting credit towards the jurisdiction's moderate income RENA for units that were converted from being deed restricted to moderate income households. Units must meet specific conditions described in government code 65400.2. At this point, I'll be handing off the presentation to my colleague, Manuel. Manuel, take it away. Yeah, hello everyone. So just to continue on where the tables, Table G reports on locally owned housing sites that were included in the in the housing element in, in the housing element sites inventory that were disposed of by the jurisdiction. Table G most likely does not apply to most jurisdictions, but a site must meet three conditions to be included in its table. One, it must be locally owned. Two, it must have been included in the housing element sites inventory, and three, it must have been disposed of by the jurisdiction. Table H requires that local jurisdictions provide an inventory of all locally owned surplus, exempt surplus, or excess land. If your jurisdiction has these types of land, you're required to report the APN, address, and a few other fields. Table H was added just a few years ago due to changes enacted by AB 1255. This table requires that local jurisdictions provide an inventory of all locally earned, so locally earned surplus, exempt surplus, or excess land. If your jurisdiction does have these types of land, we require to report the APN, address, and a few other fields. Next slide, please. Sorry about that jarring transition. <clears throat> chapter 162, well, for table I, chapter 162, statute of 2021, SB9, requires ministerial approval of certain housing developments within a single family zone that contain no more than two units, as well as ministerial approval for a parcel map for an urban lot split in a single family zone. Units constructed in urban lot splits approved pursuant to SB9 are required to be reported on Table I of the APR form. Table I requires parcel identifier information and a column to indicate if you're reporting a unit constructed or a lot split. If you report a unit constructed, please indicate the number of units. For units constructed, the unit must only be reported on this table once it is constructed, which would be when a certificate when a certificate of occupancy is issued. Only report newly created units. For example, if an existing single family home is, is converted to two units, only report one unit in this section. If a duplex is newly constructed on a property with no existing units, report two units in this section. If units are demolished on the site, please enter the number of newly constructed units. Also note that any application for a unit must be reported in table A, and any entitled, approved unit, permitted unit, or constructed unit must also be reported in Table A2. Now for Table J, <clears throat> only report student housing development for lower-income students that was granted a density bonus pursuant to subparagraph F of paragraph one of section, of subdivision B of section 6591.5. Luckily, a very narrow group of housing developments qualify to be reported on this table. Please ensure developments meet all specified requirements before including it in this table. Next slide, please. The summary tables auto populate with information on both, one, projects approved using a streamlined ministerial process, and two, the number of applications submitted. The summary table is only there for your information. They auto populate with information already provided and can be easily printed for your own records. An important thing to remember is that the tools and summary tables are counted based on the dates provided in earlier tables. So for example, building permits will only be counted if the year the building permit was issued matches the reporting period for that APR. If you notice the totals are adding up to the right number, check to make sure you've entered the correct years. If you see an error in any formula on this page, contact HCD. Next slide, please. If you are the recipient of a LEAP grant, you're required to report on the status of the grant in the APR. The task described here should match the task described in your LEAP application. One thing to note is that you should only start reporting after you've executed a contract with HTD. The most common reason that APR submissions fail is due to missing information, but the conditional formatting in the form helps you identify areas where this might be the case. Anything in the form that is required is highlighted in yellow. Anything that is green is only required if the fields apply to your project. 
So for example, in table A2, once an APN is listed for a project, the required fields, in this case, street address and unit count, become highlighted in yellow. But the section in orange is highlighted in green because it is only required if you've issued an entitlement during the reporting year. Next slide. The finish year tab contains several additional tools that may assist you in completing the APR form. The first tool is a validator, which will run a check of all the required information. The validator will create two files. One file is a copy of the APR form with problematic cells highlighted. The second will be a list of the problematic cells with the exact cell number with the error. The second tool helps format table A2 for printing. Since table A2 has so many columns, printing it onto one page is not easy. This tool will create a work with, workbook with four tabs, one for each reportable activity and one with project identify information. The third tool is the date checker. This will highlight in orange any dates that occurred outside of the reporting year. You can leave those activities in the form, but to ultimately get credit for those units, they must be reported on the APR for the same calendar year. Next slide. There are two ways to submit your PRs. First, HCD is an online system that allows you to load the form yourself. If you don't know your username or password, please reach out and we can send it to you. The link to the online system is in the APR form. You can also submit 2022 APR via email to apr at hcd.ca.gov. Please send an Excel workbook attachment and not a PDF copy. For the housing element APR to OPR, please email the completed workbook to opr at opr dot apr at opr dot ca dot gov. Next slide. AB 2097 gives ACD the authority to refer violation to government code 65400 to the attorney general. ACD now has the authority to request corrections to the APR and reject an APR should corrections not be made. Next slide. Please note that the 2023 APR is due April 1st, 2024. The 2023 APR will be required to include reporting on all projects permitted to SB6 and AB 2011. The 2023 APR will also require reporting whether each housing development was subject to ministerial or discretionary review. HD encourages the practice of tracking, tracking housing developments approved pursuant to those bills in order to facilitate reporting. Next slide. Remember, again, all 2022 APRs are due by April 1st but HED is here to help. If you run into any issues during the submittal process, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our team is actively monitoring our email box and is happy to help in any way we can. We are really excited about the collection of this data and we appreciate all of the work that jurisdictions will be making to provide this data. Just like jurisdictions, HED is working really hard to adapt to the new requirements set forth by the legislature. Thank you for your time today. If anyone has any questions, we'll be happy to discuss more during the Q&A. I'll hand it over to Tom for any questions. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, busy answering questions in the chat. Um, I think if there are any other questions, uh, feel free to also include them in the chat. Um, I did accidentally click on something that said I wanted to ask the question live. Um, I did answer in the chat, but just in case anybody else um, is interested in the ABAG ADU affordability analysis and how to um, use it in the APR. Um, so it's really up to you. Um, you know, ABAG did provide this analysis based on ADU affordability. HCD does not necessarily approve or disapprove of any affordability justification. Um, but if you do choose to use it, um, you know, we ask that uh, it, it basically matches your own assumptions uh, based on the uh, actual rents or sales prices uh, within your uh, particular jurisdiction. Um, and I don't see any other questions. Um, there are a couple of questions around supportive housing. Um, real quick, just, uh, yeah, it kind of goes back to the to what type of housing it is, if, if, it's con if it's considered housing units or if it's more like a group living or group quarters arrangement. Um, if it's individual housing units, 
yes, they, they may be reported. Um, if it's more of a group living situation where occupants do not have their own unit, um, it's considered group quarters and should not be reported. Um, so SB 35 pre-application be included in table A. Um, so I don't believe we uh, are collecting data on pre-applications now at this point in table A. Table A is really for that application that was uh, deemed complete um, by your, um, you know, by your, your planning staff. Um, and so I don't believe the pre-application would, um, would, would count in, in those, uh, in, in that case. Um, do we report it as rent or deed restricted? Um, sorry, Nancy, maybe just elaborate. Is that the, with ADUs or, um, uh, if, if, if it is ADUs, then, um, yeah, I mean, it, it would, it would likely be a non deed, rest deed restricted. Um, and if it's renter, renter or owner, again, that's, that's maybe a, you know, kind of a judgment call on your part. Um, I think I answered a, another question in the chat saying it's, you know, I might default to renter just because, but you know, it's really kind of your best guess as to whether or not you want to classify it as renter or owner occupied. Um, SB 330 pre-applications, again, it kind of, the pre-application um, thing, I, I, we're not currently tracking that in table A. Um, if you, you know, um, if you got the, uh, you know, the, um, when, once the formal application, I think, is submitted, that's what you would report uh, in Table A, whether it be SB 330 or uh, SB 35. Um, the asterisks in A2, um, I believe the asterisk let me just double check here. Um, I believe the asterisk indicates that it is an optional field um, to be completed. Um, I'm gonna open up the form and just double check here, but I believe that's the case. Um, See, do we have to provide the HCD tables on the general plan APR and HCD APR? Um, I, you know, as far as how you present the general plan APR, I think that's, you know, largely up to your discretion, um, what you feel like would be most helpful for your legislative body and for the public um, to, you know, view and understand. Um, you know, understanding the how the housing element APR can be massive um, with the amount of data in there. So you may just want to sort of refer to it um, within the um, general plan APR. Um, but that's that's kind of a uh, judgment call. Um, oh, supportive housing, Nancy. Um, yeah, I would. I mean, yeah, I would. Uh, I would classify it as as probably you know renter and um yeah i'm not sure if they have like actual deed restrictions so um yeah i mean i think um however the particular supportive supportive house, housing arrangement is um you know presented to you upon um you know project submission it's fine to just be consistent with that. Um, so if it doesn't have a specific deed restriction, then it's okay to put it as um, as non-deed restricted. And you can always include in the notes section of the APR more additional um, detail on that project. Um, okay, Natalie, we want to summarize the progress of the housing element. Oh, sorry, this thing keeps scrolling on me. Um, Okay, yeah, I mean, that's that's a fine, fine approach, I, I think. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, both the housing element APR and the general plan APR have to go before the legislative body um, on or before April 1st. 
uh, will prior APNs and current APNs. Uh, so the the prior APN is optional. Uh, the current APN is required. Uh, BMR that expired. Um, no, if a BMR unit just the affordability expired on that, that's not a reportable activity at this point. Um, at least not on the APR. Um, maybe some other reporting requirement, but not on the APR. Um, are jurisdictions required to present the general plan planning commission prior to city council? Um, you know, that's really up to you. The statute talks about presenting the APR to the legislative body. Um, you know, and, and you know, you, so that's somewhat open to interpretation. I, I would imagine it means that at minimum city council, but um, if you would like to present it to your planning commission, I believe you can, but um, I don't believe that's a statutory requirement. Unless Eric and Layla, I know you're jumping in there too. You may have a different. Mm -hmm. No, I, I know as much as I know, um, it just depends on the local jurisdictions if they want what they want to be approved at the planning commission before they send it to the city council. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, up yeah. to the local jurisdiction. So with the new state legislation that waives the zoning clearance review for ADU projects, ADU would now be submitted and approved as building permits. Do you still want that info to be included in the planning application table of, yeah. Um, yeah, had that had that uh, question earlier. Um, yeah, at this point, um, we would request that um, all four stages of the you know, approval and building uh, process that we're tracking be reported on. So you you would report the application being submitted for that ADU in table A. Um, and then, you know, there may be some duplicative information, like you mentioned, it would just be basically a copy, copy paste. So um, you may report the issuance of that building permit in as an entitlement and put that in the entitlement section. Um, and then we have another section where the building permit is issued. So you put the same information in, in that section too. Um, so maybe a li little duplicative at this point, but um, I think um, that's with, with the way the form is structured, that's probably the best way to go about it um, right now. Um, I think the, Okay, yeah, Layla's jumping in there for that one. Um, so state law waives zoning clearance review for ADU. So I'm, I'm actually not up to date on ADU law. Um, so there may have been some new, a new law that, um, that went into effect January 1 that I'm not aware of um, that talks about this um, zoning clearance. And actually, I should brush up on that. Um, but if, if somebody else in in the group of participants wants to, wants to chime in on that particular law, I don't, I don't know that bill number or um, I'm familiar with those exact provisions. Uh, I'm aware of the recent ADU bills from several years ago that, you know, did a lot of uh, by right um, processing for ADUs, but there, there may have been a new one. Um, I don't know if anybody else knows, but I do not. Um, yeah, not seeing any other questions um, in applicant with a commercial only building is AD 2097. See, I'm not sure what AB 2097 is right offhand. Um, 
apologies for that. Oh, the parking reduction. Oh. Okay. Um, so, oh, okay, yes. Um, yes, 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 that's right, that's right. So yeah, that those parking provisions um, and utilization of those, um, that bill is not reportable on the APR as of yet. That was one, that was, that was one thing that they, um, maybe they forgot to do it was to add a, add a APR tracking um, requirement to that bill, but that is not, um, not currently uh, uh, an item that we're tracking on the APR. Utilization of AB 2097. Um, so the public land being disposed, um, so just, uh, just to, to clarify, so the, own, the, this, ho hopefully this is related to table G, um, table G is where a jurisdiction would report, um, a site that was included in the site's inventory of the housing element. Um, if it's a locally owned site that was identified in the housing element as, you know, accommodating a portion of the regional housing need. Um, and then that site is disposed of, then you would report that site in table G. Uh, you don't report just any local, just like a locally owned site that was not included in the site's inventory and it's disposed of. Um, you would not necessarily need to um, report that site. And if it's a school district, it would, yeah, it would not be reportable in the APR, I don't believe. Um, Yeah, let's see, I think I answered that one. Um, yeah, the noticing requirements, I, I don't believe there are. I not, I've never, <laughs> I've never um, ran a public meeting and I'm not super familiar with all the provisions of, you know, noticing and, and whatnot. Um, I can answer this question. Um, so okay. because I work for local government for several years. So, um, so most local governments require you when you present to the city council or planning commission, you advertise it in a uh, public noticing. So it just it should be the requirement of your local government, not the OPR. So OPR and SCD does not tell how you should present to your legislative body, but we both need you to present to your legislative body before submitting it to us. Thanks, Leila. And I know that, um, yeah, the statute does specify that the public uh, must be allowed to uh, provide comment on the APR. See if there's any other questions you all have. Um, yes, please. You know, feel free to continue to put them in. Um, also, you know, feel free to send us an email, um, HCD. You know, for um, housing element APR questions. 
uh, APR at hcd.ca.gov. Um, we'd be happy to, you know, help you out, provide you more information, um, assist with completing the form, um, you know, any anything that can really make your life easier while completing it, we will try to help you with. Um, Affordability regarding unit affordability, you state that if it's based on the determination by the local jurisdiction, does it need to also fall under the parameters of the state's affordability calculator? Um, yeah, so it it our APR instructions do reference the definitions for uh, low income, low income, very low income, moderate income, and so forth, um, which are in the California Health and Safety Code. Um, and uh, which is uh, which our um, affordability calculator is based off of. Um, you, there's no requirement to use that specific affordability calculator um, to determine the affordability. Um, however, the um, affordability uh, determination should be consistent with our instructions, which um, describe that they uh, must meet those um, affordability affordable uh, affordability definitions that are in the health and safety code. Um, for HCD, we do not require the documentation um, stating that it was presented uh, to the legislative body, the resolution or the agenda, you know, feel free to include it. Um, if you'd like, um, but it's not a requirement for us. Um, and then real quick, I'll just, um, I know we're, we're all, you know, you all are working on the 2022 APR, but I just wanted to reiterate that the 2023 APR will um, will require reporting on the SB6 and AB2011 uh, projects. So, um, you know, however you can sort of implement tracking those to in order to facilitate reporting later on um, would be um, would be good. Um, the APR, um, one of the new one of the new um, additions to this year's APR is actually in Table B um, that tracks the progress toward the extremely low income housing need. That's all um, pre-populated for you based on prior data, um, prior year APR data that's been submitted. Uh, but if you have any questions around that, feel free to um, to reach out to us around that requirement. Um, so I don't think we got to Got to a lot of questions here. Hey, John, there are still uh, eight open questions in the question. I'm, I'm trying to go through them, but there are still eight questions. Uh, yeah, so the, the two questions at the top from Nancy and Nguyen, I believe I answered those. Um, The noticing issues, I, like I said, I can't speak to how you would notice uh, this item.
Um, and I'll also mention, um, you know, you all have to complete the Excel form um, and submit that. But um, I would encourage you to, you know, log into our online system um, anyway, even if you don't plan on submitting it using that portal. Um, you can view um, prior year submitted APRs. Um, you can download them if you'd like. Um, you uh, and then when your new APR form is uploaded in the system, you can view your you know most up to date Rena progress um, and so forth. So we're trying to you know make enhancements to it to make um, make the system a little little more useful. You can create a PDF of the APR. Um, so we're continuing to try to um, you know make make that a little more usable for for folks. Um, to to track their um, reporting progress. Um, let's see. So, yeah, really, you know, shelter, emergency shelters that that would pretty solidly fall under the group quarters definition and would not be reported. Um, again, transitional housing. It's it's more about the. Um, the the units and whether or not there are individual units in that development. Um, if there are individual units, you would report it. Um, if not, then um, you would not report it. Um, for the extremely low income, yeah, if they weren't previously tracked, um, will you need to update last year's APR? To, uh, yes, uh, you would need to send a revise revised APRs from prior years if you did not report on extremely low income. Um, so it's it's a little, um, there is a space for extremely low income. It's separate from the other affordability um, columns. Um, and what you would do is you would report the units as very low income in one column towards the RENA. Um, and then there's another column that sort of uh, where you would port extremely low income. And um, like, let's say you had 10 extremely low income units in a project, you would report all 10 in the very low income for the purposes of RENA. And then you would report the same 10 in the ELI units toward the ELI uh, need. So again, send us an email if you have any questions around that. Um, it's a new requirement, so we're happy to to walk you through how that works. Uh, copy of your I just wanted to reiterate and just answer because there are just several discussions in the open questions. Um, so um, we require that we require that the APRs that are submitted to SCD and OPR be presented to your legislative body. Typically, um, if something is presented, you need to uh, do noticing. And um, most local jurisdictions, um, if there is an item in a consent calendar and there are several comments on it, they move it to the public hearing. However, the details of this is not um, a, is not a description of OPR at CD. We don't go on to those details. For us, what is important that you have presented to the to your legislative body and uh, public have been able to provide comments. Um, so, so, but we don't go into the details of um, this.
Okay, well, I think. Okay, so since there are no more questions, I wanted to conclude um, this um, webinar. If there is any question left, please send us email to the email provided um, in the, uh, that is in the OPR and the SED website, we would be happy to answer any questions within usually three to five business days. And that concludes our presentation. Please um, remember to submit your um, APR and OPR, uh, APRs, uh, ACD and OPRs, um, APRs by April 1st. And have a great day. Bye.